Hey, welcome back. In this project video, I'm gonna show you how to make a sideways knife sheath. This knife sheath is designed for a double blade trapper, just a very common uh, trapper knife that most people carry as far as a pocket knife. It works really well. Um, we've already got videos out there for both the pancake style knife sheath and two different size versions, as well as the fold over, what we call a fold over knife sheath. This is very traditional, very simple. Uh, there's videos on our YouTube channel to make both of these uh, styles here. This one we're gonna add to it because I get a lot of requests and I've had a lot of requests over the years for uh, guys wanting a knife sheath that sits sideways or horizontal on the belt and not vertical uh, because it tends to kind of stab into you uh, getting in and out of the truck, different things like that. And so I'm not a big fan of the sideways, sideways knife sheath, just the simple fact that as they get loose over time, sometimes the knife can fall out very easily. Anytime you bend down and pick some up off the ground or what have you, the knife will fall out. So you gotta be a little careful with that. I think this design, the way it's built, I think it, that belt tightness will actually help maybe to give it a little bit of the pancaked effect to where it will maybe keep that knife in there more securely over time. But again, sideways isn't my favorite style on knife sheath, but it's very popular and a lot of people are requesting those. So if you wanna add another knife sheath to your, uh, to your, your collection of goods that you try to sell to customers or things that you make, then we're gonna show you in this video how I make one of these really easily, two pieces of leather. It goes together really quick. So let's hop right into the video and make one of these. All right, so here's our knife, and which is a double blade case trapper, and there's our two pieces. It just takes these two shapes here to make this. Here's our pattern pack that we do offer. There's links in the description for that. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this pattern out here, and I'm gonna show you how to transfer with just transfer film. This is just some thin mylar. It's more of a plastic type transfer paper, and it works well if you're gonna uh, try to transfer to cased leather. And so we'll go ahead and trace all of the lines in this floral pattern, and then we'll transfer that to our main uh, outside body panel piece and we'll go ahead and case that up just a little bit with some water and that'll allow us to transfer that with a stylus. All right, so here's our main outside piece here. I'm just gonna mist that down with a little bit of water. This is just a piece of nine, 10 ounce, clicked out for the shape that we need. I'm gonna go ahead and put my maker stamp. Um, knife sheets, I usually don't put a maker stamp on, but with this particular style, that fold over piece on the back is a great place to kind of put your little stamp. And that way people can tell who made it. If they see one, they can kind of look you up to get another one made um, and it's out of the way. It doesn't take any tooling space. And so here what we'll do is just hold our pattern down. I'm just gonna use a modeling tool here to trace this off. You can use a stylus, you can even just use your pencil again um, and trace all those lines one more time and that will transfer those lines to that cased leather and then we'll be ready for carving. All right, so there's all our lines. As you can see, the impression of all those lines is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten up our border. Remember, whenever, anytime we transfer a pattern, whether it's a tap off or a tracing or anything else, we wanna go ahead and square up our borders with a set of calipers. We do not want to trust the border line that we traced. You can see how far it is off there. So we wanna square that up. And then I'm just gonna take a straight edge and connect those two across that back fold over piece. That's just gonna make that nice and even straight. All right, so now that all the lines are transferred on there, I'm gonna take my swivel knife. I'm using a Berry King uh, swivel knife here. We're just gonna carve all of these lines and begin our tooling. And uh, we'll just show the tooling process and we'll get this whole little pattern tooled here.
All right, so now that our tooling is done, I've let that dry just a little bit, and uh, that way we don't mess up our tooling in uh, trying to get this edge. But we'll go ahead and edge the opening of the knife sheath, both top and uh, bottom, and go ahead and edge that, and then we'll edge that fold-over piece as well. That's the only real areas that you need to edge and slick at this moment, but we'll go ahead and get all of those edged and slicked. I'm using our number four edger there. Uh, just to knock that down get that nice and round and then we'll slick those edges and let them dry and we'll begin to uh, assemble this. All right, so now that our edging is done, you can see how the back piece fits. You wanna line up that little contour that's on the opening of the knife sheath. You're gonna have a little bit of overlap or a little bit of feather all the way around, just like in all of our projects that we do. So we'll have some to trim because that front piece can stretch. And so now we'll go ahead, that top edge of that back piece, we wanna go ahead and wet that down just a little bit with water. And then we're gonna skive it to a nice feathered edge. That's just the top edge of the back panel. And you wanna do that just basically straight across the top and that's gonna allow there not to be any kind of bump where that top panel folds over to make the belt loop. All right, so on this fold over piece, we're gonna go ahead and wet the end of that down, the tail end of it, and we're gonna skive that down to a long tapered feathered edge. We're gonna let it overhang anyway, but you wanna just do a long bevel there, a long nice skive, and that's gonna make it to where it doesn't have a big lump in it when we fold it over and sew it. Now's our good opportunity here to go ahead and get our groover. If you are gonna groove for your stitches, not, don't necessarily have to, but I like to groove all my stitches. We'll go ahead and cut our groove. I'm using a Jeremiah Watt or Horseshoe brand groover, wing divider groover. It works really well. Any groover will work for this. But we're just gonna go ahead and cut that and then we'll be ready to glue these two pieces together and sew them. I'm using this bottle dispenser for the glue. It's a good way here. Uh, you want to be careful not to get too much glue to the inside of the knife sheath, obviously, because if you do, it's gonna you're gonna have a hard time getting a, a knife in there. So you just want to go around the edge. All the glue is gonna do at this point is just hold those two pieces nice and square and straight, and uh, that way during the sewing process, that way they don't move around. You could probably just hold it and sew it, but I recommend gluing these two panels together. So you just go around the outer edge on both of these and let that glue set up and we'll put them together.
So now our glue is tacky. And so you want to be sure that your feathered, feathered edge there is at the top where the fold over is going to be. And then you just want to line up that contour again. Should have about the same um, overlap or, or feather around the outside of the sheath. And we'll just put that in place and then go ahead and hammer that together and get a nice good contact and we'll be ready to go to the sewing machine. All right, I'm gonna sew this on my Cobra Class 4. You could probably definitely sew this on a 26, but the main thing here is I'm always usually running my Cobra with the right toe presser foot or the outside single presser foot um, on this machine. And usually when you're sewing, you've got the bulk of the material of the project outside the machine. But on this one, we're gonna sew it with a bulk on the inside. You'll see why in a second. But for doing that, I wanna go ahead and put the double toe presser foot on here. You, if you don't have one of these, the inside presser foot uh, or inside toe presser foot might work as well, but I like the stability that the double gives me and uh, when I'm sewing this. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and get to sewing. And like I said, you're, you're going to start sewing on the fold or the belt loop fold side, um, where traditionally you would start on the other side and keep the bulk of the material outside of the throat of the machine. But we're going to sew here because we want to sew this top edge down first and then we'll once we get around there we'll fold that belt loop underneath and we'll sew over it as you'll see um, i did make one mistake on this machine we sat down to it i did not check my bobbin and that's one thing you probably need to do uh, before you start on a project is check the bobbin and make sure you've got enough to to get get done with a project sewing job um, as you can see here, i ran out and i ran out in a bad spot too because i've got a cut and burn that before we get too far or else I won't be able to get in there um, after it's folded. So we'll go ahead and change the bobbin right quick. So now as you round the corner here, when you get to where you're pretty well straight, you want to stop and then we're going to fold that belt loop piece under. Um, what I've got to do first here since we ran out of bobbin is I've got to go ahead and cut and burn those stitches before I do that. Uh, make it a lot easier to do it right here than it will later. So we'll go ahead and cut and burn those right quick. So now we're going to finish up the sewing. We're going to fold that belt loop piece under. You want to do your best to try to keep it straight. You can have quite a bit of overhang. You don't want it super loose. You want some uh, tightness back there in that belt loop, but fold that under, make sure it's square to the sheath. And then we'll go ahead and just sew straight all the way to the end. And that's going to sew that down and finish sewing the knife sheath. It's a very simple way to create that belt loop without having a a weird piece of leather that's going to go on after the fact and cover some of the tooling and that kind of thing so that's this is kind of what makes this knife sheath kind of special i think So now she's all sewed up and we've gone ahead and trimmed our, our stitches and now we'll just trim all that excess feather off. We'll trim it and then we will sand around the outside edge everywhere, 
and edge it and then slick it and it'll be ready for oiling. And our knife sheath is finished. I'm going to go ahead and just oil it with uh, olive oil. You can use your, the oil of your choice, whatever oil you want to use. Um, if you're going to dye these, I would recommend dry, dyeing the panels before you assemble this thing and make it a lot easier. But since we're just oiling it, I did all of that work after the knife sheath was done. And now we'll coat it with tan coat and that's going to be my finish and it'll be done. So that's making our sideways knife sheath. As you can see, it goes together really easy. It's two pieces of leather. The problem with most of the time when I've ever tried to make these before in the past was I would just take our standard fold over knife sheath pattern, cut off this belt loop, not have it on there. And once I got the knife sheath put together, then we'd come over with a piece of leather and sew around the edge. To me, that's not enough of an anchor point and that whole piece gets really, really loose over time and the knife sheath just doesn't work very well to me, in my opinion. So we really didn't even offer those and kind of stop making those all together just because I didn't think they were a good design. And then, like I said, four or five years ago, I designed some a version of this and uh, I, thought, I thought I was on a better track there. So for this year, I went ahead and kind of sat down and refined it and got it just right. I'm really happy with it. I've made a few of them for the sales floor and I think they work really well. The knives fit in there very good, nice and snug. I also think once the belt is in there, once it gets broken a little bit, I think that belt spacing is what's gonna push up against the backside of the knife and hold it better inside this knife sheet. So hopefully, when it, as it gets older, you're not dropping your knife every time you bend down and pick something up off the ground or something like that. So we do offer a pattern pack for this knife sheath if you're uh, interested. The pattern pack is only available digitally. We're not gonna print these out and mail these to you. This is a digital pattern pack only and um, because you can print this out very easily and quickly on your own printer at home, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. It's got both pit panels there for you to cut those out with. I even added on this one as we grow, as we you know learn how to make patterns better and better especially on our digital ones um, I put a little uh, square one inch square gauge there on the top of this pattern so when you print this out be sure that that square measures one inch 
square and then all the patterns will be the right size. Um, it's also got 10 tooling patterns in there. I did 10 new tooling patterns for this and um, I'm really happy with them. I, I think they're a lot of fun and in the video as you saw I actually used the pattern pack and showed you kind of how I would transfer that pattern using the uh, the vellum or the, the uh, transfer film to get that pattern onto here and so just another option when you're going to look at it. If you're going to make a bunch of these, say you're going to go to a show and you're going to make say a dozen or some, so of these, same pattern, make you a tap off and tap that off. It'd be much faster, much more more efficient and a lot cleaner. We are also offering material packs for these. They're on the website as well. Um, we do have clicker dies made for this little knife sheath. So if you don't want to have to cut these parts out, we offer them in a three pack and a six pack. So you can go there on our material packs page and purchase those. It's all cut out of nine, 10 ounce Herman Oak leather. And all you got to do is tool them and put them together. The links for both the pattern pack and the material packs are down in the description below. I appreciate you guys watching and be sure to go to dgsaddlery.com and sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter. And we'll see y'all in the next project video.